let's just end breaking news. No more bullshit. No more bullshit. No bullshit. Well, Merry Christmas. You don't want heavy news during the holiday weekend, so this show is pre-recorded. Some of my greatest hits, Burning Man. I go to Burning Man. I go native. So no news this week. Enjoy the program, except a piece of breaking news. Whoa. No bullshit news hour has confirmed that Sri Tandahar, self-financing, self-made millionaire entrepreneur, will challenge Rashida Tlaib for her congressional seat in Detroit. Ooh, wow. We'll have much more with Sri as the holidays pass, and we'll get into the puppet-killing allegations. But until then, enjoy the program. One week a year in the bowels of the Nevada desert, they build an art city. To create a society in which people perforce must interact with one another, and the medium of that interaction is, 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 is a heartfelt one. And in the end, they burn it to the ground, and it all returns to dust once again. We destroy our world here so that we can rebuild it and come back again. A new Fire, art, radical self-expression. Is it counterculture, a new culture, or the end of civilization as we know it? A bunch of people getting together to create a culture because their society stripped them of it. Whatever it is, it's an American original, and it just might blow your mind. For years, I've heard strange stories about this thing they call the Burning Man Project in the desert of Nevada. Tens of thousands of people gather the last weekend of the summer and build a temporary neon city in the dust. For a week, they fry their minds, defy convention, construct absurdist art, and dress as characters they wish to be. And when they're done, they torch it. It's a festival of seekers, but what exactly are they trying to find? Organizers give us permission to attend, but some people say cameras killed a groove, and almost no one wants the commercial media here to exploit the scene. I can try going incognito, but I've got a better idea. I'll embrace the stereotype. I'll be Media Man. Discovery Times. This week we're in the guts of the Nevada desert at the Burning Man, some kind of festival, mayhem, self-expression, Lord knows what else. I say we go for a journey, don't you? Follow me, the media man. Burning Man insists on outrageous participation, so I'll do my part. Then call my agent, Dan. It's time to enter the gates of Black Rock City. With close to 40,000 citizens, this pop-up city becomes the fourth largest in Nevada. Welcome home. Home? Home, welcome home. This is your home. I never live in this. Oh, look. Magic of tea, I got a microphone. Check that out. Hi, hi, how's your, how's, how's your life? Uh, I'm doing great. So it's your first time Burning Man. Yes, that's right. You're a virgin. Yes, All I right. am. I need you to step off your bike. You're expected to dress as your inner freak, build a fire-breathing dragon, make love, give love, do something to give line and form to this empty canvas. This is the virgin bell. Bring away. Oh, wait. It must be this one that works then. Come with me. All right, I got a few things for you. Could you hold my beer? Yeah, I can. Great. So, let's see. I got a lucky virgin stamp, which I'd like to give you. You can have it anywhere on your body. The stamp plus a $250 ticket, and I'm officially a member of the community. And don't try sneaking in. They search your vehicle for stowaways. Before I set off on my freak, a little Burning Man history. In 1986, two men living in San Francisco, Larry Harvey and Jerry James, built a wooden statue of a man, brought him down to the beach, and lit him on fire. It meant nothing. Still, people dug it. They found something in the nothing. They did it every year, and it grew from hundreds of people to thousands. The burning of the stick man got so popular that the San Francisco police put an end to it. So in 1990, they went to a place where no one cared what they burned or what they did, the Nevada desert. 
It grew from thousands to tens of thousands, and Burning Man went from a beach party to what some now call a new society. The first flame is lit in the center of town. The drums come out, and then the trombone. The women begin to dance. The mood is euphoric. The elements, however, are smothering, and it's seven days until they burn the man. And I forgot my shoes. And now, time to meet some seekers. Hey, excuse me. Excuse me. Hi, mainstream media. So this is a wacky thing that you do here. What is this all about? A bunch of people getting together to create a culture because their society stripped them of it. <laughs> Where you come from? Um, they, they call me tribal space girl. So I guess I come from another galaxy. I probably come from another perception of reality. We're now watching natives at work. It's a complete Burning Man experience. Well, just another day on the playa. Back to you in New York. Over the years, they tell me, Burning Man has changed from orgy and anarchy to a highly functioning city. The last time I was here, there was about maybe 4,000 people here. And it was much, much different. It was a lot more personal, a lot more risque. Um, there was definitely a lot more nudity. Um, there was uh, sex camps and a lot of other things that you don't see too much of here. And I think that's going to be one of the biggest challenges that, that they're going to have here is trying to keep that Burning Man, you know, appeal and that flair and that and that uh, that feeling of, of people just being, you know, kind and generous and and very open and and free. It can, it can change their lives. It literally changed my life. When I came back, I felt like I was a completely different person. So. Art is what makes this place so unique. Giant sculptures spread across the open desert, a chance to let the imagination soar. Some artists get grants from the Burning Man Committee, but others blow their life savings to make this outrageous work. It's a trip. So then... We're going to take the cranium, which is the back part of his head, and, and end up getting in, kind of into this position. I'd like to be doing more art, but it doesn't pay. The struggle with Burning Man or trying to do an art piece for Burning Man is that you want something to look really great during the day, but at the same time, you really want it to kick ass at night, too, and that's really where the trick is. The image, because it's video projection, folds itself around the head. You kind of look like it's your head in 3D. Its night aspect is really a public address system for... 40,000 people and I'm just very curious and excited about what 40,000 people might say. Well the idea of the piece is to build a you know, wood burning fire sculpture and to teach people these skills at the same time. I think that different things bring people to Burning Man, but fire is a huge part of what brings a lot of people here. Anybody who comes here is going to have a completely different experience than I do. The whole idea that is behind this is to bring people together to realize each other and to be able to communicate on a, on a very relaxed level and bring people back to the fire. With cars prohibited in Black Rock City, most people ride bikes, unless you've got it in you to build a tank or a pirate ship or a motorized porch swing. And your normal life, you're doing this stuff in your garage? Oh, my normal life. Um, retired engineer, make music, blow glass, spend years building stuff for Burning Man. This is like this is like Vegas North. Yeah, it's cool. It's like lit up more than Vegas at night. Um, it's much more fun. It's louder. It's uh, more insane, and there are very few rules. That's the best place. Are you insane? Yeah, I think so. I hope so. <laughs> so anything's the limit here? <sighs> anything's the limit. Um, not anything. Anything within reason that won't hurt people. 
including you, is within limit, I think. Freedom of speech? Absolutely. I guess I'm going to have to uh, change my look a little bit if I want people to hear what I got to say. That's the stuff. Righteous, dude. That's the stuff. Thanks for stopping. Hey, thank you. Now get out of my car. No, no, wait a minute. Okay. I'll tell you what. You're on, man. Man is clearly a place where people are encouraged to let loose. So I figure I might benefit from a slightly more relaxed look. They call me Republican too many times. I don't fit in. As your intrepid reporter, I'll do what I gotta do. Right. Hair ain't gonna work here. I've eaten dust, dealt with 105 degree heat, and now shaved my head. I've dived full on into this burning lake bed. <laughs> We want to thank everybody out there for American Coney Island. The Coney kits delivered to your door for the holiday season was a smashing success. Probably eating them right now. Oh, I'm sure you are. Merry Christmas. Enjoy that. I packed it over and over and over. But having said that, uh, the Coney kits will take a hiatus for the rest of the month. But remember... You're on a holiday, you're going to go downtown, you're going to look at the tree, you're going to walk around, stopping at American Coney Island at the corner of Lafayette and Michigan Avenue, the oldest family-run restaurant in Detroit and the originators of the Detroit Coney Dog. There's one thing you should know about Burning Man. Techno music is drilled into your skull 24 hours a day. But it's uncool to tell them to shut up, because there's no rules here, man. Money's no good here either. The idea is to leave, quote, commodification back there, unquote. But money is used here for ice, a must in any decent cocktail, takeout coffee, and drugs. Drugs and ice I can understand, but how hard is it to boil your own coffee? The party's wild, no doubt about that. I'm starting to think that's why people really come. As for sex in the streets, there's less of it than the stories I've heard, but it's still here. We're going skinny dipping. That's neat. This is, uh, we call this Shangri-La. This is like all had a flower together. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're from Victoria, British Columbia. I feel huh? Last time I was in Canada, no one was gallivanting around naked. So what is it? Huh? The drugs? No, we were thinking about doing drugs last night, but we had such a good time without that we didn't really need to even go that way. The energy really just made us high, so we didn't need to didn't need to indulge at all. Here you can just let go and for an entire week you can do whatever you want to do, be whoever you want to be, and it's amazing what you're actually capable of when you lose those shackles, you know? The wind gusts make it feel like you're toweling off with sandpaper. And still, people are walking around with it all hanging out. As bizarre as it seems, Black Rock City actually functions like a normal city. It's got neighborhoods, a fire department, and a post office. I'm sorry, can I out of contact with the outside world, Media Man has to get the report out. There's news here, fit to print. Get a real job. Why can't they all be Go home. Take the New York Times and shake it up your ass. Although it's one of the best papers, I have to admit, for the United States. They look like they might fit you. Well, they fit me out. Come around the side. What's amazing is that in the middle of a dead lake bed, the mail system works. Sort of. Volunteers make sure the mail gets delivered inside Black Rock City. How it gets out, I'm not sure. So I ask the general, the man in charge. What happens is the mail comes in and it goes out. Every day, just like a regular mail service. There's no guarantees. That's the first and foremost. One of the written principles of this festival without rules is... 
participation. So before you know it, I'm a volunteer mailman. Mm -hmm. These stickers were made by my brother, who's a graphic designer in D.C. They say, imagine, nothing to kill or die for. Imagine, nothing to kill or die for. John Lennon. Good luck. Thank you. Neither rain nor snow Get out of here. or dead of night okay. will keep me from my appointed rounds. Move faster. Aye, aye. So, where would that be? Bye, General. Thank, thanks again, brother. I'm delayed in traffic. A naked bike parade. Anyway, the design of the city is a semicircle grid. The statue of the man in the middle. The esplanade encircles an open space where the major art pieces are placed. The city's filled with theme camps. There's a roller disco and places with names like Temple Whore and Green Penis. It's funny, the burners are contemptuous of mainstream America, but they're mostly white and suburban. And their city's laid out just like a suburb, except the streets aren't named Elm and Hibiscus, but Ego and Hysteria. I camp at the Messiah Complex. It's a bunch of guys from Oregon who like to get high and offend the spiritual sensibility of anyone who's got one. I hereby charge everybody here to throw a pie in the face of the other Pope. What I'm doing is making a point that religion is essentially randomly generated. So as you're doing is putting down your place where you come from, your own people, that you're just making fun of your parents and your grandparents. I'm trying to make the point that religious beliefs in general are in fact silly. But they give us a root. Well, my grandpa had a saying, a tree without roots is wood. Here I see a white man in blackface calling himself a shaman. I see people meditating at a so-called Buddhist temple who've never been to Asia. My own view? You've got to have something to believe in to identify with. Otherwise, you drift like a piece of wood. I want to dance for a reason. I want some kind of recognition. I like these things. It's an expression of us as a group. Distracted but still charged with a duty, I deliver the letter. You got mail, brother. Oh, man, what the... F man, this was supposed to be here yesterday. You pay a guy in beer, he gets lost. You can understand that. Yeah. Why you come here? Just because there's nowhere else we would rather be. It's a party. No, it's more than a party. It's more than a party. It's uh, an affirmation of uh, positive existence, positive people, getting together, up your vibe, go home with this re-energized feeling, makes the rest of your year come together. At night, the city lights up. It's Las Vegas North, only without the money, and there's a free bar on every corner. In the middle is the wooden man, 65 feet tall, framed in neon and standing on a pedestal that doubles as a circus maze. Outside, I meet Minnie Man, Burning Man's prodigal son, who's desperately hoping to get the attention of his father. We've brought one of our art pieces out, an installation, a non-installed installation that we call Minnie Man. And he walks, and he, and he dances, and he interacts with the people of Black Roxy. We're trying to get him to recognize him. Is it Joe Horman? No. Yes, we don't know if that's going to happen. I think I'm here because this is like the end of our world every year. We destroy our world here so that we can rebuild it and come back again anew next year. Because that's how we rebuild ourselves. And if we can take a little bit of what we have here back into that world, meaning to the man. It's what you say it is.
thousand people, more or less, partying in the desert, creating tripped out things left to their own desires and demons. A chance to create the new you. It's the new year. Make yourself a resolution. Forget about losing weight. That ain't happening. Forget about that Don't I know project. It. Yeah, you know it. Never works. You know what you should do? What? Make yourself a resolution. Get your financial house in order. Call Luke Nowacki at Pinnacle Wealth at 248-663-4748 for rational financial advice going into the unknown new year. They specialize in security. Security. That's what they do. That's what they do. That's what they do. Annuities. They're the best in the business. Best in the business. Stocks. Bonds. Investment needs. What are you doing? Don't panic. All your investment needs. Wall is get it built for you personally. Not one of these all-in-one packages. You, you can call Wall Street and get that. You're going to get the personal attention. You're going to be listened to. Your dreams plotted out. Make yourself the resolution and call 248-663-4748. Happy New Year, Luke. After all that I'm talking about, the Royal Royal Alliance Associates Incorporated. The weather's foul. The music goes all night. I can't sleep. I'm coming undone. I'm not the only one. Some people here stay high days on end. Exactly what I'm here to do is have a good time. A lot of people do research chemicals, which are not actually banned. They're not illegal drugs. This is a hard place to party. I'd rather party than in the camps out there protesting this big thing? There's people that protest burning of the man, okay? There's everyone's here. Everyone's here. There's people from every walks of life, every point of view, everything. I ran out of underwear. I'm not sad. Don't worry. I'm burning up fast, man. The dust is eating into my skin. I need some tea, L C, and a drink. What's this all about? You know what I mean? Like, I like got a boutique in the desert. Dude. It's all about, you know, making sure everyone has a good time at Burning Man. This gives you a chance to talk to people while you're, you know, painting their nails and stuff. It's great. Is there anything more crazy than having a beauty boutique in the desert? Why would you put a beauty boutique in the desert? Man? That's outrageous. Because you can. I mean, it's all about creating stuff that you, you never expect to find out here. You expect to, to be going somewhere, you got plans to meet someone, you always find something else. This is um, this is everything is wrong with America. And too bad you're not here. <laughs> well, okay. I can't. Oh yeah, I can't. I can't. Fire is what this place is about. So I find the leader of the Los Angeles Fire Conclave. Yeah, Burning Man is one of those things that really can be found only in America. I'm sorry. Oh my God. Look at the flower. <laughs> Tell me you're going to see anything like that in the world. <laughs> that thing's got to be over 100 feet. I thought it would be more like consciousness. Like, you know, man, hey, you got a war going on. Some of you cats could get drafted. What do you think of that? And all I'm told is no politics. People express their politics in art. They build them. They take, you know, two or three weeks to build these things. Huge structures. And then burn them Sunday night. Why do people burn them? Well, with the temples, the idea that David had is that he wanted to give people a, an opportunity to, uh, you know, find a, a moment of you know, solace and quiet and peace where they, where they could really reflect on the event. Um, he encouraged people to write negative feelings or cares or worries or concerns that they have for people in the world or other worlds uh, on parts of the temple. And then as it went up, those cares and prayers were lifted higher on the smoke of the, of the temple. Well, hello! Where can we put it before the battery dies again? Uh, let me clear some bikes for you. Can we uh, take five? Yeah. I 
want to join the group because like so many others here, I didn't take the time to build anything. The organizers, the Burning Man Project, subsidizes the major work with grants of up to $50,000. These art pieces are large and intricate, and without money, they wouldn't be here. It provides me a place where I can really exercise my work and my abilities for real service work, where I can really do something that's just not for money, where it's something that's from the heart. And um, to be able to exercise my skills and my gifts for that purpose seems right. So for me, Burning Man is the time of year where I feel like I'm living my life properly. The beauty of this process is that you can create something out of love and you can put that love into something and have the public directly interact with that and respond to the efforts that you put into it. And then after they're done with it, you get to let it go. And what that does is it creates a cycle and it creates a tradition that it keeps living and keeps living. And, and for those of us who have done work where we've put our heart and soul into it and let it go, it changes the whole way you view fine art. It really does. It takes it right out of the marketplace and right into the heart where it should be. Burning Man is not a hippie construct. It goes beyond anything done in the 60s. The people here build a city that reflects their idea of utopia, and then they burn it. Black Rock City has four newspapers, a recycling center, a half dozen radio stations, cops, street signs, and volunteers who go out every night to light the street lamps. fire department with over 200 members. We run three 24-hour fire stations, an urgent care clinic, and a dispatch center. So we've got only an average of about two to three dozen fire calls a year. Most of them are for very, very minor issues. It's not a magic place. There are real problems here. Drug ODs, heart attacks, occasionally a woman gets raped. But this place is much safer than the average American city. There's even an airport, and some commute by parachute. With night arriving, it's time to spit fire. How does a man get into, like, pulling chemicals in his mouth and lighting fires? <laughs> My friends tell me that they've seen it coming for years. Um, it started uh, very early when I was about six, so I didn't have a fear of fire when I was growing up. These things are very, very dangerous, and I've seen people blow parts of their head out. I've seen them burnt from third degree burns from, from here up. Um, you know, people turn into, into human candles. The goggles are the biggest safety issue. If, uh, if something catastrophic does happen, you want to, you know, you don't want to worry about your eyes, you know, cooking like potato chips. The first you know? thing that we teach is safety yeah. all the way around. That is that is hands down the first thing. So this is priority. If you get a primary ignition on this, this is going to be intense. You know, like when mom's broiling in the oven and you open the door and your face is right there and your eyebrows feel like they're cooking off. Yeah. It's a lot like that. Take it. Uh, start small, okay. and then work your way up. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Should do the same exact thing. Okay. Right. Whoa, 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 whoa. Where's your goggles? Right here. All right. Take, take a little more fuel and really punch it. Okay. Okay. Much better. Much better. better. So what you're going to try now, if I may borrow your... Of course. Now that was a long sustain. You don't, you're not going to get that right away. It was on your face, man. Yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> 
actually. You still got a whisk. It was you saw it, didn't you? I just want you to like get a little more duration out of your spit. Oh, instead of right. Yeah. yeah. A little closer and then pull back. Much yeah, better. baby. That's it. Is that good, Professor? That's, yep. That's good. That's good. You're getting good. Okay. You get that good at big ignition. Bring it in and punch it. There awesome. you go. I get to join the fire conclave in pursuit of a Guinness World Record. The most fire breathers gathered at one time. You know what I don't understand, Mark? What? Is why there's not a Burning Man type festival here in Michigan. That's a good question. Think about the know-how. We have the space, too. We have the ability. Yeah. We have welders, builders, carpenters, computer experts, right? We could make the greatest art. These are some pansies, <laughs> uh, you know, from Washington <laughs> State. I just like the idea of doing it in the middle of Detroit somewhere. Yeah, with a gigantic pirate ship and some some house music on top. You know, we got the techno fest. <laughs> well, I, yeah, that's true. We do a movement. I also just picture a bunch of uh, Detroit residents looking at it going on in the middle of the city going what are you doing no they're going like this <laughs> god damn that's cool yeah, did, well. what took so long i tell you what takes so long what because you need to get the permits to get this on right well you, the man's always up in your business you know what i mean yes yeah, so you need someone to cut through all that bullshit cut through this shit that's... get you the permits right get you the expertise to build this ship how do you get the pirate ship i have no idea down the freeway you gotta uh, drive it what's the best way to do this I I don't know. You know who might know? Who? who? I, who what, ADR. What, that's ADR. ADR. That's what they do. They figure it out. Logistics, permits, how to cut through the red tape and do something cool. And how do, do I, how do I something contact them? Profitable. You call 248 318 9424, my good pal Barry Ellen Tuck. Honest, ethical, smart, can do, get it done, on right, on time, on budget, right on. 248 318 9424. Now let's get back to insanity. <laughs> Five days into Burning Man, and we're invited to a wedding. I'm Amber. And I'm Brandon. We come from uh, Washington State, Vancouver. How'd you meet? Huh, my brother set us up on a blind date. You just figure you're both into, like, uh, fox furs? And... Oh, actually, um, the shaman said that we should wear these coyote skins because they're, first of all, this is a girl one, and that's a boy one, and they made for life. That's right, this is Rex. There's no doubt this isn't your parents' church affair. Would you like to see me put in my septum tusks? Yeah. Love to. Beats me if anybody's vested this guy with the power to pronounce people husband and wife. Welcome to our wedding. Well, I am nervous, yeah. I am Dr. Mogambu, the great Burning Man witch doctor. And I am here to marry these two wonderful people today. There is some skepticism about the media at Burning Man, but not from the shaman. The more I see America, the less I get it. <laughs> but I like it that way. Yeah, I work in a laboratory uh, back in Washington, and um, I really love the Discovery Channel. I think it's a great show, and I really, really love going tribal. Using my bike as their limo, our couple, blonde, tattooed, and handsome, head to the faux Buddhist temple.
honor I pronounce you men and women. kids are happy and in love and that much is real. But the couple's married by a biochemist from the Northwest who is done up in feathers and a black face spouting half-baked American Indian mysticism. I can't help but wonder if there's a there here. Or is this just a gathering of people perpetually dissatisfied with the mainstream? If they hate where they come from and where they are, then where is it they're trying to go? I figure it's time to speak with Larry Harvey, the man who built and burnt the first Burning Man statue. Why? Why? That's a mighty, that's as broad as the Mississippi. Human culture, it can't be planned. It's a spontaneously occurring phenomenon. You've noticed we've taken commerce out of the equation, not because we're against commerce, we sell a ticket, but we created an environment where people immediately interact with one another through the medium of gift giving. A lot of artists have been involved in the early formation of this. This is an elaboration of Bohemia. But unlike Bohemia, we did one historically novel thing. We turned a scene which was essentially communal, informal, like like avant-garde of Bohemia's anywhere, and turned it into a city and invited everyone in and said, it's public. We've, we've created a vessel, we've created a context, we've created a society in which people perforce must interact with one another, and the medium of that interaction is, 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 is a heartfelt one. I'm curious to hear what he thinks about the media. Isn't it ironic that, that people get involved in a profession, oftentimes, because out of, out of passion for it, because they feel they have a gift that, that, that will connect them to the world in its exercise, and only to discover they're being paid by people who don't care about their gifts, they're just renting their talents. And their talent is a commodity on the market. And it squeezes the passion right out of it. One of the principles here is gifting. Giving things with no expectation of getting something in return. I bring something for Larry. The last thing I got. What is it? If I may ask. It's these pants, brother. <laughs> it's all I got. <laughs> Your pants? All right. For you, man. <laughs> Keeping the shoes down. Well, thank you very much. It's you a little know. cold out here. I'll, I'll wear them. You promise? I tried, yeah. No, I'll wear them. And I like the suspenders in particular. These are the 10 principles of Burning Man in body and clothes. What's the meaning of the man himself? Does it have any meaning? Yes, it has meaning, but we never assigned formal meaning. If you did, if I did that, I'd be like handing you a pill. You say, "Okay, it's contained." I want to throw eggs at it. Go ahead. Right. Just try not to fritz out the neon circuits. Right now. Thank you. Go. You gotta go. A world without money. A society of radical self-expression. It all sounds good, but there's a growing number of people who are not sure that the scene is moving in the right direction. For instance, Burning Man has incorporated itself into a company. It's got lawyers. And I feel like that they have an LLC, six people own it, lock, stock, and barrel. They could take this thing tomorrow and they could sell it to Pepsi-Cola if they wanted to. We could do nothing about it. We have no say. All these thousands of people who come here and who go on and on about the profound experiences and the God trips and the spiritual thing and how they get goosebumps, you know, when they smell the ply dust on their sleeping bag. And we don't mean anything. We have no power. We have no say. We have no input at all. And it seems to me that 10% of the city are doers, people with knowledge of the sun, the arc welder, machinery, art. But the other 90%, the hangers on, the partiers, the ravers, they serve a purpose too. I'm going to do my sh and I'm going to hope they come over here and applaud and fill me with some love that lets, you know, lets me keep going. Some aren't inspires, some doesn't. Some of it's performance. The point is, just do something, baby. Tonight, Tedward gets 70 fire breathers together to try and break the Guinness World Record. Breathers, if you are here for the record attempt, please sign in at the artery. We only need 70 people. Uh, although that record was, was uh, achieved with 84 breathers. So I want to have more than 70 just so that we're, you know, not running shy in case somebody has a misfire or something like that, you know? 
We wait until dark and then head down to the esplanade to make our attempt. Despite our best efforts, only 65 people show up, so no world record. The fire breathers are a prelude to the burning of the man, a moment when the entire city gathers to celebrate. You know, I got a dream. Yeah? I got a dream I have my house in order. Financially, my house in order. Not my financial house, but my actual house. The finances. I have a dream to own it. You're not going to believe this. You can make that dream come true. Yeah, you call who? David Hall. Uh, what's the number? Uh, it, 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 call Hall first. 866. 866. Okay, I didn't know call it was 8 Hall. You got the website confused. Yes, The I website did. is call... Um, call Hall first. <laughs> That's we easy. changed it. Call, call Hall, Hall first. first. Not com. Call Hall first. Dot com or eight six six Call Hall. I feel a jingle coming on. Ooh. What? No dreams too big. No house too small. Call David Hall. <laughs> He'll do it all. Yeah. <laughs> there might be a little copyright infringement. Really? That's just words. All right, hold on here. No dreams too try, big. Try it again. No dreams. No dreams too big. No dreams too small. Eight six six. Call Hall. Perfect. <laughs> this morning and receive sketchy reports that Katrina has taken out New Orleans. If I am the media man, the town crier, it's my job to inform the city. So how's it going? I mean, what, what's, what's going on today? What are you doing? Kind of feeling around here like you can't really talk. Like, you know, what's real? Like, we want to forget it? Did you hear about New Orleans? I did, you know. What did you hear? The city's, like, wiped out. Wow. It's, wow. <laughs> Thousands dead, right? Yeah. Our generation, we got a war going on with the computer, uh, you know, with the drug generation, we got parents at the divorce, like, you know, we got, we got a lot of stuff to say. I don't just want, I like to party, man, I just want to like... Right, well, partying is partying, you know, it's a release of energy, you, know? you can't just do it all the time, really nothing. Sometime tomorrow, I'm gonna egg that burning man myself, that's my art. Yep. Burn it. Burn it, baby. Yeah, man. Let it go. Yeah. You know there's a thousand dead in Iraq? Somebody yelled suicide bomber. People stampeded across a bridge and died. Yeah. I, dare you, I dare you 30 seconds. Here we go, everyone, moment of silence because uh, it's just not right, so. This land is your land, this land is my land. From California to New York Island, to the Bay with forests, to the Gulf Stream water. This land was made for you and me. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Thanks for coming by, Charlie. Yeah. We took the radio free Burning Man. Please enjoy yourself, people. away from the real world and I'm worked up enough now to egg the man to see if I get beaten to a pulp for it. That's my performance art. It's almost like they're waiting for me. Why? I'm stopped by the Black Rock Rangers, the Burning Man cops. Despite what they say, Burning Man has rules and expected modes of behavior. This is no place for a troublemaker. I talked to Larry. He said I could do it. Larry put it all together. There's got to be rules. It's a fine line, especially with Rangers, since we're not law enforcement. We're like ski patrol. You got people out here that get overindulged, and, you know, they lose their common sense. Still, Larry says it's okay. It's my radical self-expression. This other 
other guy with the mohawk. He loves the man. You can't hear him, but this guy wants to do me violence, even though violence is against the rules. Yeah? Yeah? Come on, man. <laughs> there you go. Dance against the rules! <laughs> there ain't no rules against me smashing eggs on your floor. Yeah, I mean, Sorry. Cheers, mate. Don't forget to pick up your loop, though. I wonder, yeah, if, it, I wonder if it'll fry. I kind of like the look. I hear it. <laughs> I deserve that. There's a little out of hand. Burning Man is a big party, more or less. But at the core of it, there are some passionate, very skilled artists and philosophers, ingenious people working together to make it happen. You can't do, you can't do this stuff anywhere else. Uh, yeah. Everyone who picks up a ranch and works on this piece, even if they only started doing it today. Tonight we are going to uh, burn the body of the angel out in a symbolic ceremony expressing our own release from the apocalypse in our lives or what we see or what we know it's basically going to be a moment of release and a gift to the people that we've shared this artwork with tonight the city will gather to watch the man burn it will be the moulin rouge in the desert admirals and neon ballerinas and fairies and pirate ships and giraffes a mind freak a trip out i paint my skull gold you know like i'm johnny oscar i'm becoming one with the burning man As the sun sets, I glide along with the people of Black Rock City toward the man. The neon lights, lasers and glow sticks, the machinery, a ragtime band, over 800 fire handlers. There's no individual anymore, just a stew of flesh and bone, nerve and synapse. My generation has so much ingenuity, so much excess energy that they've created this moment for themselves. Everybody's on a wave, just grooving. then an explosion of fireworks and the man is burning and the people cheer but it's subdued the sort of sound you hear at a folk concert maybe they're bummed at the end of the party's near maybe they're thinking about work on monday the man tumbles off his pedestal and onto the ground burning like a house in a wheat field there's a huge fire out there, and now the primordial man awakens. Thousands race towards the flames. They dance around it in a swirling circle. Some snatch pieces of the fire and run off into the darkness. The man is dead, and Black Rock City will soon be wiped off the earth. Every year the man gets rebuilt, and it means whatever the individual wants it to mean. Some believe it's a neo-pagan sacrifice. Some think it's a symbol of the anti-capitalist free the mind movement. Some don't know what to think and wait for others to tell them what to think. Some don't care and just stay wasted. My conclusion is, at its best, the man is a symbol of self-invention and expression. Maybe it represents the spiritual emptiness of my generation. Maybe it's a symbol of sharing and community. Or maybe it's just a lame piece of art. Reporting from Burning Man, this is Charlie LaDuff. That's a trip. Merry Christmas. We'll see you live next week. Did you say that?